from the All-Star Game, everybody. Welcome to Chicago, birthplace of the blues. Chicago at Wrigley, the White Sox swept the Cubs and sent them into a month-long free fall. In the second game, Mike Soraka's seven and two-thirds scoreless innings was backed by an 18-hit attack, and Sox fans got the broom job. In the third game, Mike Caruso's two-run homer was a game winner as the Sox ran the table. Now this week, and it's Cubs Sox outside. Sweet home Chicago. League play in the all Chicago matchup one last time from the south side from Comiskey Park ESPN Sunday Night Baseball it's the Cubs and the Sox Cubs lost the first one here three to two a dramatic ninth inning finish to that one but then yesterday Chicago the Cubs that is beat the White Sox for the first time this year back of John Lieber tonight the rubber match of the series hello everyone I'm John Miller and welcome to Sunday Night Baseball it's a beautiful night here Chicago a huge crowd again Cubs fans Sox fans the electricity is here now the Cubs have had a real struggle since they were swept by the White Sox back in June three in a row at Wrigley they have plunged into the darkness eight and twenty one beginning about that time Sammy Sosa though having a great year Joe Morgan met up with him before the game Sammy last year you had the Cubs on your back you were trying to win a pennant that gave you a lot of incentives how are you handling it this year when you Cubs aren't paying so well well, pretty much, you know, we've been uh, a little bit struggling uh, for the last couple of weeks, but, you know, uh, it's a long season. I, I know that uh, we can do it, and I know we believe in ourselves. Last year was fun. Last year was fun uh, because, you know, we came to the ballpark and played hard and, and, and winning every day. And, 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 you know, when you play in the team that, uh, you know, it is kind of slumping right now the way it is, my attitude is the same every day. Come here and go out there and do my job every day, regardless of no matter what happened, because, you know, the only you can do is go out there and play hard, give me 100% every day, but we're going to be okay for the second half. Well, John, we talked about the Cubs being an older ball club. Well, older ball players know how to adjust. They go and take each and every day like it's a new day, and that's what the Cubs are trying to do now. All right. The White Sox have gone just the opposite direction. This is a club building for the future, and the future starts to look awfully close. Frank Thomas is the old man in this ball club at 30. He's in there tonight at first base, but we'll be getting a look at some new names, guys like Greg Norton, Carlos Lee, Paul Canerco, and Chris Singleton who went for the cycle earlier this week. And don't forget Carlos Lee out there in left field. You're talking about um, Ardonius is going to be on the All-Star team. He's representing him. He's taken Frank Thomas's place at the All-Star game. All right, so Maglio Ardonius who's just having a, a great year for the White Sox. We'll see them all here tonight. The White Sox and the Cubs, the rubber match of the series from Comiskey Park on the south side. And of course, Slam and Sammy heading for the All-Star game and the home run derby. You get 32 big flies and counting. Think something that small can't hurt your car? Even smaller carbon deposits can clog your car's fuel injectors. So use Gum Out Extra Fuel Injector Cleaner to get rid of deposits for smoother overall performance. And did I mention better acceleration? Drive your fuel injectors clean with Gum Out Extra. Rogaine Extra Strength is proven to work for four out of five men. I like my chances. Only Rogaine has extra strength, and it's proven to stop hair loss or regrow hair. Rogaine Extra Strength, proven to work. 
America Online makes planning your summer easier than ever. Vacations. Movies. Concerts and more. This summer, keep in touch with email, instant messages, and buddy lists. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Sign up today. We'd like to take a second to introduce you to the president, CEO, and chief financial officer of a company called Life. ask more from a truck than 99% of those around you, then you are what we call a one percenter. With your demanding standards in mind, we submit the more powerful all-new GMC Sierra. Completely redesigned with a revolutionary towing system and our largest cab ever. One percenters, your time has come. The all-new Sierra from GMC. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Obi-Wan, we've got to save the Queen! Roger, Jack! Nisa Jar Jar Binks come for comic relief! Emergency landing on Tatooine! No! Pod racing is whisk! Love you, Mom. I love you, Padme. Uh -huh. Oh no! Darth Maul! <laughs> My brains are spilling out! Oh, joy. Weird. This is the weirdest date I've ever been on. I'm out of here. Go, you must. Farewell. Goodbye. You can be introduced every few weeks this summer. Collect all 20. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is presented by Gum Out. Drive your fuel system clean with a complete line of Gum Out Performance Fuel Additives. And in part by America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Beautiful weather here in Chicago on the big ovation at Comiskey Park. And a mixed ovation as the White Sox take the field because it seems to be fairly evenly split here in Chicago between Cubs fans and White Sox fans. And taking the hill, James Baldwin, the right-hander who's been the enigma in the White Sox scheme of things. Meanwhile, Jim Riggleman just trying to get his Cubs who went to the playoffs last year straightened out they have lost 21 of their last 29 games here's his batting order presented by Pepsi Mickey Morandini leads off at second base Tyler Houston is at third base Sammy Sosa in right field 32 home runs for Sammy Mark Grace the veteran hitting cleanup at first base Henry Rodriguez who's having a big year and well above his career average right now He's the D.H. Glenn Allen Hill in left field. Jeff Reed recently acquired from Colorado. The catcher Jose Hernandez at short and Curtis Goodwin bats ninth in center field. And on the mound for the Chicago White Sox is the right hander James Baldwin. And he was their opening day starter Joe but uh, he has not done well four and eight as ERA above six. Well John a lot of people have a lot of different opinions on why he's doesn't win more consistently because he has good fastball, good curveball, good changeup. He has all the pitches to be a dominant starter, but he seems to make mistakes quite often. A lot of people say he's not focusing properly, but he says he's focusing. He's just not getting the job done. He's trying to work at that. Well, the, they play sloppy defense on occasion, the White Sox, but, you know, they have guys, young guys who are still learning to play. The infield, Norton, Wilson, and Durham, these guys are all still learning to be big leaguers. Of course, Durham has been here for a while, but the other guys are still learning to play the position. And when they put Mike Caruso at shortstop, he leads, he has 16 errors. And there you see Wilson taking over at shortstop today. 80 errors, most, the most errors committed by any team. First pitch to Morandini, and that is in there for a called strike. So you heard the Sox fans booing when Mort Morandini stood in there, and the White Sox fans cheering when the pitch was called a strike. And that's a foul into the Cubs dugout on the first base side. All into the count. One thing Morandini says about playing in this ballpark, this is the first time that he has ever played in here, and he says that it is the best infield that he has played on in the big leagues. Too high for Baldwin. One ball, two strikes. Comiskey 
Park on the south side, the first ballpark in this wave of new buildings in baseball architecture. Second base, shallow right field, Durham, and he throws it out over to Frank Thomas. There is one away as Morandini goes down. And another sellout here at Comiskey. Each of the three games of the series sold out in advance. More than 44,000 for each game here. Of course, the added interleague games this year have meant that teams like the Cubs and White Sox play each other home and home. The Yankees and Mets, same thing. Tyler Houston takes a called strike. Tyler Houston, who had been a catcher, will now devote his attentions full-time to being a third baseman, at least against right-handed pitching, and did not do any more catching. Well, Johnny's got a great arm for it. Very strong and pretty accurate arm. Hot fly. Durham. Hot number two. And Jim Ringelman feels that Tyler Houston concentrates better on his hitting and on his whole game when he's not catching. Well, now here comes Sammy Sosa. And he gets a ra rather loud welcome both ways. This may be the first place I've ever seen Sammy Sosa get some booze. Sammy is the National League answer to Ken Griffey Jr. in the American League. He's kind of the man in the league. Love him everywhere, except perhaps on the south side of Chicago. <laughs> right. Sosa, only one RBI in the season series against the White Sox. See that hard fastball with a lot of movement on it. Wow. That, that was the best pitch he's thrown. I mean, with movement, 94 miles an hour, and it really dove down and in on Sammy. So says not homered against the White Sox this year. Hit hard to third. Norton. And that's the inning. So Baldwin, who has struggled so terribly, has a very quick first inning, nine pitches. Now the White Sox are coming up when we come back. Sunday Night Baseball from Chicago. The young Chicago White Sox coming up now to their young manager, at least young in terms of Major League managerial experience, but he appears to be one of the top young managing talents on the, uh, the field today. Jerry Manuel trying to grow his young White Sox into a contender. Here's his Pepsi starting lineup, Ray Durham. One of the top leadoff men in the American League at second base. Chris Singleton went for the cycle earlier this week. Center field. The big hurt. Frank Thomas at first base. Maglio Ordonez headed for the All-Star game. And look at his numbers already surpassing his totals from last year in both homers and RBIs. And for good measure, he's hitting over 330. Carlos Lee, a, another impressive rookie in left field. Paul Canerco, the former Dodger farmhand, the DH. Greg Norton at third base. Mark Johnson, the catcher, and Craig Wilson is at shortstop. That's a very, very young White Sox batting order. On the mound for the Cubs, right-hander Steve Traxel. This season has been a nightmare for him. And it's amazing, John. I mean, we're talking about Baldwin and how he has been consistent. Traxel has the ability to win, but this year has been, like you said, a nightmare. He's starting to work on a slider now. The 20 home runs, that's just amazing to give up that many home runs in 100-plus innings pitch. But he's been working on a slider, something new, and we'll see how he develops with his other pitches. We'll just see what happens. But he, he has to be consistent if the Cubs are going to make a move. Traxel was a 15-game winner last year. Here's Ray Durham to lead it off against him. And the first ball swinging fouls it back. And Durham ordinarily is very, very patient up there. And uh, last year he was one of the uh, hitters in the league who saw more pitches for at bat than any other. And Durham comes into this game hitting 3-0-2. Base average 377. Right to Morandini in second. One away. And the Cubs fans can cheer. Yeah, let's take a look at the Cubs while they're on defense. Morandini, good second baseman. Mark Grace, he's the best defensive player on the infield. He's won four gold gloves for the Cubs. Grace, 35 years of age, been a Cub since 1988, but he's in the final year of his contract. 
and has expressed many, many times how he would like to play his whole career in Chicago with the Cubs. Well, he's been in his last year a few times, John, and they re-signed him, you know, to a two-year extension. Or, so I, I'm, I, would, I would not be surprised if he doesn't get a chance to finish his career with the Cubs. Well, John Traxel has allowed 13 first-inning runs in the last four starts. That one is caught by Traxel off the bat of Chris Singleton, one of the outstanding young players for the White Sox. His first year in the big leagues, he came in today hitting 313, including hitting for the cycle on Tuesday. Well, you can see he's in good fielding position. He's not falling off to either side, and he reaches up and grabs it. Normally, guys who mix their pitches well stay there, and they're in good fielding position. If you're a power pitcher, you may fall off to one side or the other. And now Frank Thomas. Big and strong. The home runs are down for Frank. 12 homers, but 57 RBIs and a 3.23 batting average. He also walked over 50 times, which is what you expect from Frank Thomas. Well, if he's doing what you expect, John, why isn't he on the All-Star team? We come to think of him as a, as a perennial. Right. That's a strength in the outside. He's also trying to come back from the, the first down year yeah. that he has had as a big league. Frank yeah, Thomas hit in the 260s last year. Also drove in 109 runs. Back to the screen. Well, maybe he is losing it because that, that pitch there may, normally wouldn't come back. That was in his wheelhouse. Good swing there by Frank, though. Usually you try to prevent Frank Thomas from getting those big arms extended. And those were extended. His arms were extended on the pitch up and out over the plate. Traxel's lucky to get that one back. Well, he's one strike away from getting through the inning without a run. He gave up four in the first in his last start. It's a ball too low. Two balls, two strikes, and as you say, Joe, 13 first inning runs in his last four starts. He has an eight-game losing streak going. Well, look at those numbers for Frank Thomas last year. 29 home runs, 100 RBI, 9 RBI. I mean, a guy's batting average shouldn't be as important as his production. You, know, you put your first baseman's responsibility is to drive in runs. And he hit 29 home runs, and he drove in 109. And he's batting average, a, yeah, and a batting average is a personal thing. Anyway. Three and two to Thomas. Maglio Ordonez would be next. Oh, struck him out. That might have been the splitter. And a few cheers from Cubs fans go up. Mark Grace is coming up. No score in Chicago. Our certified technicians. Whether you need your windshield repaired or replaced, they're professionals who do the job right the first time. For PPG Pro Star certified. Mark Grace has taken ball one off the outside from James Baldwin. We start the second inning. No score in the game. And that fastball in there for a strike from Baldwin. Now Baldwin comes into this game with an earned run average above six. 6.32. Even though he was the opening day starter, and Traxel, his opponent, comes in with an ERA of 6.73. So what you're saying is that we may have some fireworks here before the night. Well, on the other hand, as that one misses inside, both of them had very strong first inning, very few pitches thrown. They got ahead of every hitter. And both of them have the potential to shut down the other team. Both had very fine years last year. Nope, not this time, Mark. Come back. Three and two. He thought it was too low. Full count to Grace. Grace hitting 311. That is too low, and he gets the walk. He's the first base runner of the game. This is the final game being played before the All-Star break. And tomorrow night, All-Star Monday on ESPN. Baseball tonight at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Followed by the Century 21 Home Run Derby. Larry Walker, Sammy Sosa will be involved. Nomar Garcia Parra should be involved if he can. He's uh, not been able to play here the last several days. And uh, that starts at 8 o'clock live from Fenway Park. Then 10 o'clock, the Celebrity Hitting Challenge right here on ESPN. Henry Rodriguez, the hitter. They looked a little rusty on that fastball. Henry Rodriguez, who's the, the quintessential home run hitter who doesn't hit for much of an average until this year. This year, Henry's doing it all. He's hitting 337, fourth in the league at the start of the day. He's got 15 homers. That's outside. One ball, one strike. And John Baldwin pitching to Mark Grace was just aiming the ball. He was not throwing freely as he was in the first inning. 
And, and that's where they say he doesn't focus. He really focuses well, obviously, in the first inning. Now they comes out in the second and walks the first hit. Did he swing? Yes. Fielding Culbreth, the third base umpire, ruling in favor of the White Sox in that one. One ball and two strikes. An All-American League umpiring crew, Gary Cedarstrom, Ted Barrett, Tim McClellan, and Fielding Culbreth. No score, top of the second. Grace is going to try for third. Ordonez will not go after it. And the Cubs fans come alive here at Kaminsky. First and third, nobody out. Chuck Baldwin threw a fastball high and away. Rodriguez swung at it. He was throwing him hard stuff and keeping him from pulling the ball. Now, what does he do? He throws him a curveball down and in, something he can pull in the hole. And Grace gets off to a good start. He's not the fastest of base runners, but he makes up his mind right away, doesn't slow down, and he gets around to third base. With, a, with the hole at first base, a left-handed hitter up, you can't give him things that he can pull in the hole over there. And that's exactly what Baldwin did there. Now Glenn Allen Hill. Chases one. Glenn Allen has been a part-time player, only 142 at bats, but... He's got McGuire's Sosa-like home run numbers. He's averaging a homer every 10 at bats. First and third, they're playing the infield, looking for the double play. And that slider misses low and outside. One ball and one strike. He'll hit one here yesterday, as you see how the White Sox play the infield. Thomas on the bag at first with Henry Rodriguez. Two and one the cat. There's a little bad blood yesterday for the first time yeah. between the Cubs and Sox. And Jamie Navarro, the pitcher for the White Sox, struck out Sammy Sosa, kind of pumped the fist in the air. Glenn Allen Hill got upset by that. That's a foul that will come back out of play. Two and two the count. And later in the game, Hill launched a home run and he started pumping his fist. Very out of character for Glenn Allen, but he said the whole thing, the, the homer and the fist pumping, was sort of retribution. To Navarro for Glenn Allen, so it was kind of showing up Sammy Sosa. Well, he struck Sammy out three times yesterday. That's a base hit to center field, and the Cubs will go ahead. Grace comes in to score, and the Cubs lead one to nothing. Well, he was staying away, and he got Glenn Allen to chase a couple of pitches off the plate and away and now this fastball is middle of the plate in look at that right down the middle and he hits it back through the middle four bases we take a look from mass cam you can see that right down the middle and you can't make mistakes like that he even made a mistake in the first inning to Sammy Sosa right in the middle of the plate Sammy hit it hard but he hit it to the third baseman with as much movement as he has on his ball I think he just it, it, you just have to stay out of the middle of the plate I don't see why everything ends up in the middle of the plate James Baldwin will turn 28 in four days. As Jeff Reed, the new pitcher, for the Cubs takes a call strike. You see the movement on that pitch there? I mean, that was a great pitch. He makes a good pitch, a couple of good pitches, and then he seems to go get into the middle of the play. And Baldwin last year was 13 and 6 for the White Sox. Working as both a starter and a reliever. Won 12 games the year before. Fly ball to left. Carlos Lee. And that is the first out of the inning. Rodriguez holds it second. Hit it first. He, I mean, there is what he needs. The movement on this pitch is what he needs. Watch this pitch. I don't know if we'll be able to see it from there, but the ball moves away. Watch this pitch. Watch how it moves. Starts in the, That's in the middle of the plate. Now look at it run away. That's how you get hitters out. Start something in the middle of the plate, maybe, but move it out of the middle. And he's got such good movement. If he concentrates on doing that, I just don't see how they're going to beat up on him as they have. I mean, a six, averaging six runs a game. I mean, that's amazing to me. Earn runs, that is. Jose Hernandez. And that was a little bit. Hernandez went 24 days without an RBI. May the 27th, till June the 20th. 
and has started to come out of it lately. The last 18 games, he's had seven homers and 14 batted in. That's in the dirt for a ball, two and zero. He's one of those free swingers, Joe, and strikes out a lot. He and Sammy Sosa may end up setting a record in the strikeouts. He and Sam, between the two of them, they strike out quite often. There you see, in 1998, 140 strikeouts last year. 82 this year in 285 at bats. They forgive Sammy because he hits so many home runs and drives in a lot of runs. A high hard one. Two balls and a strike. Well, it was 2 0. Oh. He was looking fastball. He got the fastball and did not hit it. But this will look again. It's not in the middle of the plate and it's 94 miles an hour. It starts over the middle and moves in. And you just can't catch up with it. One to nothing. Cubs. Two on, one out. The foul and the count is two and two. Right in the middle of the plate again. Baldwin is from Southern Pines, North Carolina. Was an all sports star there, baseball, football, and basketball. Was a tailback in football. And he got a lot of offers from uh, big colleges to go play. And Hernandez fights that one off. Two and two the count. Including Clemson. Clemson wanted him to play football, so you know he was a serious football player. But when he was a junior in high school, it started coming to him that he was really a pretty good baseball player. And he had some coaches who encouraged him, pushed him toward taking it more seriously, and he did. In the big leagues. But struggling through a bad year, at least a bad first half. Well, John, one of the things I'm noticing is the difference. He'll throw a 94 mile an hour fastball with a lot of movement. Then he throws a 90 mile an hour fastball and he ends up in the middle of the plate. That tells me that he's holding back, that he's trying to aim the 90 mile an hour fastball and he's throwing the 94 mile an hour and just letting it get its natural movement. There's Contreras watching. He's the pitching coach. Three and two the count. Rodriguez at second. Hill at first. One out. And he misses ball four. So he had him and then could not make the pitch to get him. And now Nardi Contreras, the pitching coach, will go to the mound to talk with him with the bases loaded. And Curtis Goodwin, a left-handed hitter, coming up. Well, again, he wants to talk to him about that selection there of pitches. He threw him a 3-2 slider in that situation, and that's probably his third best pitch. No career slips. I think that's what Marty's talking to him about. Nardi is. Nardi Contreras. Uh, I mean, that's a slider down and away. I mean, if you've got a good fastball, I'd rather see him throw the 94 mile an hour fastball with movement, even if it's a ball. Just turn your best fastball loose. Because he has a good one when he throws it and it gets the movement on it. Base is loaded. Contreras goes back to the dugout. Henry Rodriguez at third base. Glenn Allen Hill at second. Jose Hernandez at first alongside Frank Thomas. Curtis Goodwin from Oakland. Ball one. Curtis is hitting 270 and 89 at bats. He's been playing more lately against right handed pitching with an injury to Lance Johnson, putting him under the disabled list. Very fast runner, not any power. And he got the fastball in there, but fouled it off. One ball and one strike. And John, in talking to Curtis before the ball game, he says toned his game down a little bit. Remember, he was pretty flashy out there in the outfield. He said he's toned it down a little bit. Three men on, one man out. A great opportunity for the Cubs. That's into left center field. Singleton tagging at third, Henry Rodriguez. And he will score the second run of the inning. Two nothing, Cubs. Contreras, you're happy because he threw two good fastballs there with some movement. So this last pitch running away from him, and that's why he hit it to left field. Good movement on that fastball. Now the leadoff man, Mickey Morandini. Two on, two on, two in. That one is off the outside. Change up, missing one ball and no strikes. 
This inning started with a walk to Mark Grace. That was the beginning of what is right now a two run rally. Good moving fastball sinking down to the way. Two and oh. Baldwin has threw nine pitches in the first inning. Has now thrown 29 here in the second inning. First inning when he was throwing strikes, he got three ground offs. And then this inning, it's like a whole different kind of a game for him. Contreras on the phone to the bullpen. Well, one thing that Jerry Manuel said before the ball game is he wasn't going to stay with him very long. If he gave up a few runs early, he was going to be out of the ball game. Bullpen activity starting. Left-hander Brian Ward has started to loosen up for the White Sox in the second. Two runs in. Tyler Houston, a, a much more powerful left-handed hitter, would be next. Morandini standing in. And Baldwin got the call on that one. Two and two. And Morandini didn't think so. Well, it's another fastball start. Look, it starts in the middle of the plate, running away. And it catches the outside corner. Hill and Hernandez get their leads. And back off the fist foul. Still two balls, two strikes to Morandini. He's made three good fastball pitches in a row. He threw two away, and then he came inside with a good fastball there. Sometimes if you have three or four pitches, as he does, maybe you need to concentrate on using one, use the fastball, move it around, rather than trying to throw them all. to the count. Now the runners will be allowed to take off. Hill at second, who runs real well. Although he's had some knee problems. And Hernandez, the runner at first. Two to nothing, the Cubs lead in the second inning. Threatening to get more. Baldwin needs to make a big pitch here. Morandini is very particular at the plate. He rarely swings at a bad ball. Gets a sign from Mark Johnson, the catcher. There go the runners. Off the outside. The walk and the bases are loaded. The third walk of the inning. I think that pitch actually crossed up Johnson. I mean, he caught that ball funny. I'm not so sure that pitch was that far out of the strike zone or, or if it was out of the strike zone, but he caught it funny. Looked like the ball had a little extra movement on it or something because he caught it. Now, now watch... Let's take a look at the watch the pitch to watch where that pitch is. See how he caught that ball. I mean that that's not going to help you get the, the strike call. Look at see where the pitch is when it crosses the plate. I mean almost got by him. He uh, he was not really setting a target right on the outside corner like you would for a fastball either. No. And then Johnson went out to talk with him so most likely he. He did cross up his catcher. So here's Tyler Houston, the eighth batter of the inning. The changeup in the dirt. Houston popped out to second his first time. So a key moment in this game right now. The Cubs with a chance to turn this into a big inning with a hill at third. Hernandez at second and Morandini at first. I guess runs already in. Sorry, John. I guess it's hard to trust your stuff when you haven't had a lot of success because he's definitely not trusting his stuff and his best pitch right now is his fastball. Well, yeah, but I mean, you got to throw it. I mean, he starts with the guy with a changeup. I mean, throw your fastball and use location. You don't have to throw curveball changeups and all these pitches to get a hitter out, but you can get a guy with a good fastball and good location. Sammy Sosa is on deck. Two down, second inning. Popped up, foul, and this will go back out of play. One and two now to Houston. Well, most games have a moment or two that you would call the key to the ball game, and they could happen any time. But one that we might look back on as a key moment might be occurring right here. Baldwin and Houston with three men on, two men out. A soaring pop-up. Ray Durham wants it on the right side. He's got it. So... Baldwin keeps things from breaking open. Magli Ordonez, the all-star, coming up. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. 
You got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, he had control of you. He'd win and win and win, and you'd hate him and hate him and hate him. You'd beat him every time. You've got to call 1 800 Classic to get ESPN Classic. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is presented by Gum Out. Drive your fuel system clean with a complete line of Gum Out Performance Fuel Additives. And in part by America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. And this crowd has been worked up since well before the game started at Comiskey Park, Chicago. And a big ovation for the White Sox member of the American League All-Star team. He's heading to Fenway Park for the All-Star festivities tomorrow. And here he is, Maglio Ordonez. And what a year this guy's having. He's outshone even his own teammate, Frank Thomas. Texel, first ball swinging Ordonez. Lost one to shallow left center, Glenn Allen Hill. Staggered under that one, but he got it. Ordonez came in hitting 333. 18 homers and 67 runs batted in. Also a very strong arm from right field. But he is one of several excellent young talents on this White Sox ball club. And unfortunately, we don't get a whole lot of time to see him right here. He's gone on one pitch facing Steve Traxel. Here is Carlos Lee now. Another young White Sox player. He's from Panama. Takes low for ball one and Joe. Uh, they say this guy's got a chance to be a real good one. He's hitting 302 and still learning. He's just learning how to hit. And the truck still drops one of the dirt outside. 2 and 0. He said that as a kid, his idol was Rod Carew. And he had a chance. He sort of thrilled in the Arizona Fall League last winter when he had a chance to meet Rod Carew. He attended a game. Popped up foul. That will come back out of play. Two balls and a strike to Carlos Lee. You know, I was thrilled the first time I met Rod Peru as well. I'm thrilled when I see him now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what a hitter. Yeah. It's Carlos Lee from uh, Aguadulce, Aguadulce, Panama, was named the organization's top prospect and best power hitter by Baseball America after last year. He had 21 homers, 106 batted in in double A. Got the splitter right back to Traxel. So two quick outs for Traxel here in the second inning. You know, I mean, Traxel has been in a terrible slump. He's lost eight straight games and joined his last six starts. 25 innings pitched, 38 runs allowed before tonight. I mean, that, that's a slump. Yeah, it is a slump, especially from a guy that's had success in the major leagues in the past. He won 15 games last year. Here's Paul Canerco. Canerco, you may recognize that name. I mean, he was a highly touted rookie with the Los Angeles Dodgers last year. And many thought he would continue the Dodgers string of rookies of the year. Got up to a slow start with the Dodgers. And was then part of uh, the show. And he was part of the, what would you call it, Joe? The, the, <laughs> yeah, the sudden string of moves the Dodgers made trying to uh, Get it all back together, which included not only making trades, but also making uh, managerial changes, general manager changes. He ended up going to Cincinnati for Jeff Shaw and uh, moved on to the White Sox now. And showing signs of displaying some of that great talent at the big league level here in Chicago. He was also minor league player of the year the year, you know, before he came up to the Dodgers. So he has a lot of potential. And in talking to Wallace Johnson today, he says that he's starting to come around and he looks like he now understands what he's capable of doing here in the major leagues. Well, he's got 11 homers, 31 batted in, in 66 games played, and he's hitting 284. And he's got a seven game hitting streak going. Canerco has three homers in his last six games and has had a 520 batting average in that seven game hitting streak. Usually seven games we don't even mention that on Sunday Night Baseball. <laughs> but when a guy's got like 14 15 hits in seven games <laughs> we mention it. That gets our attention. That does get your attention. 
Shoot out nobody on. Greg Norton is on deck. Two to nothing. The Cubs are leading. In the dirt for a ball. Three and two. Traxel, of course. I mean, talk about what a difference a year makes. He was a 15-game winner last year, as I said. He was also the man who pitched that playoff game, that epic game against the San Francisco Giants to determine the wild card representative for the National League. And he shut down the Giants. I mean, he was never better. They never scored against him. That's a walk to Canerco. So he takes first with two down. It is the first runner of the game for the White Sox. You see, he was had a fine 96 season. Not so good in 97. Excellent last year, 15 and 8. But this year just been a total disaster. 2 and 12. You know how bad it is. If he loses this game, they give him 13 losses by the All-Star break. He will equal the record for futility in National League history. No pitcher in National League history has ever had more than 13 losses at the All-Star break. Here's Greg Norton. From uh, Oakland, California. Bishop O'Dowd High School out there, Joe. And, uh, yeah, he went to school with my daughter, Angela. Yeah, Greg. The area product. He's got lots of power. Norton with 11 homers, 30 batted in. Switch hitter batting left handed. And that's off the outside. 2 and 0. See, it's interesting. Traxel and Baldwin in the first inning when they were able to get their hitters 1, 2, 3, no problem. As soon as they've gone into a stretch, both of them have had problems pitching from the stretch. Canerco at first, not much of a uh, threat to run. 2 nothing comes ahead. Grace on the bag with it. That's at the knees for a strike. 2 and 1. Norton has been uh, battling a slump here lately. He's hitless in his last 21 at bats. It's that will get on your nerves. 0 for 21. Yeah, and I, I can speak from experience. Yeah, it will get on your nerves. Come on. I went 0 for 35 once, so. What year was that? Close to my last. <laughs> it was almost my last year. Base hit. That one almost hit Canerco. I don't know, Joe. It's almost like he was able to to hear your vibes about even you went through a, a long <laughs> over. It well, it him, and look at that next pitch base hit. We also got some help from Traxel. You got a big opening over there. What does he do? Throw something off speed. Now he can pull in in the hole. The game is played differently now in that when I first came to the big leagues, you didn't let a left-handed hitter pull that ball in the hole. You throw him sinkers away, fastballs away, hard stuff away. Now they'll throw a changeup anytime and they'll let a guy pull the ball to the right side. We've seen two left-handed hitters do that. One on a curveball and now on a changeup. Of course, uh, two pitchers who have just been struggling for three months. Well, that may be part of the reason you struggle. Curveball for a strike to Mark Johnson. Johnson, 23-year-old catcher. Johnson has only a 194 average in 98 at bats. He does have four homers. Two on, two out. And that one sinks too low. One ball, one strike to Johnson. One of the things you're supposed to do when you have a runner at first and you're set up for a double play, it means your second baseman's up the middle and your shortstop's up the middle. Leaves a big hole on the right side. You try to pitch to the middle of the diamond. Try to make them hit the ball back through the middle where it's an easy double play. Inside, two and one. Now Johnson, we mentioned he had not done much hitting. However, his first start as a big leaguer last September against the Red Sox against Pedro Martinez and his first hit of that game his first career major league hit was a triple against Pedro Martinez that is foul Pedro the untouchable he touched him <laughs> for a triple Pedro who probably will get the start I think they made that yeah they made, made that official yeah, yeah. Who's you, who you think's going to start for the National League? Well, I'm, I keep thinking Kurt Schilling. Schilling, who began his career at the Red Sox. Right, correct. In their farm system. They traded him to Baltimore with Brady Anderson. They traded both of them. See if you can get Bruce Bochy on the phone here. We'll 
Let's see if we can get that done. Get him to announce that. Showing a 13 game winner. If you're nationally, you don't want to start Randy Johnson because you can't get any runs for him. Yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> you're scared to start Randy. Say, Randy, no, no, no. We can't start you. We don't want to get shut out. If we start Randy Johnson, your team's going yeah. to get shut out. The first pitcher in history that when he pitches, his team always gets <laughs> shut out. There go the runs. And that is right there. Strike three call. Two nothing comes. Sammy Sosa coming up. Done. Just keep it over a Saturday night. Hertz will provide the great rates. What castle? The rest is up to you. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by Hertz. Nobody does it exactly like Hertz. In Chicago, the Cubs lead two to nothing as Sammy Sosa gets ready to lead it off here against James Baldwin. We're on the south side of Chicago tonight. And here is the toast of the north side. Sammy Sosa to lead it off against Baldwin. Sosa grounded a third his first time. That's too low for ball one. Sammy Sosa, who broke into the major leagues in this part of town, 1989, with the White Sox. It's low. Can you imagine, Joe? He actually started his career with the Texas Rangers in the minor leagues, yeah. but was traded to the White Sox in the Harold Baines trade. Baines went to Texas. The shortstop. And Wilson throws him out. And there is one away. Mark Grace coming up. James Baldwin, the enigma of the staff. Jerry Manuel, his manager, told us about it. JB has probably the the best stuff on our staff so at any day we think that he could click it in and hopefully keep it for a consistent period of time like he did the second half of the year so we're, we're kind of looking forward to see how he even responds uh, to being to struggling and then also pitching in front of 40 44,000 or what have you in a big series and um, you know, hopefully he'll do well that tells you that he has great stuff and he was 10 and 3 in the second half last year John but I'm, I'm also wondering that, you know, you have a young catcher behind the plate. The hitter. And, and you just wonder sometimes if maybe, you know, he doesn't need that veteran influence. And this is obviously not being critical of Mark Johnson because he's trying to find his way, too. But it, it just seems to me that they're not, he's not forcing Baldwin to do certain things with his best stuff. And, and it's hard to do that when you're a young player as well. It's an oft overlooked aspect of the game. The smart race walk for the second straight time. The fourth walk allowed by Baldwin in this game. Grace, by the way, has walked 51 times this year while striking out only 17 times. So Grace, a perennial 300 hitter, also gets a lot of walks. And is one of those dangerous kind of hitters in a tough RBI spot because it's real tough to get the ball past it. Here's Henry Rodriguez, runner at first. Next ball inside for ball one. By the way, Sammy Sosa, who led off this inning with his 66 homers last year, at the All-Star break last year, had 33 homers, 81 batted in. Came into play tonight, 32 homers, 74 RBIs. So almost identical for the home runs and just a little bit behind in the RBI. So all he needs to do is hit a home run, one of them a grand slam, and then hit a bases loaded triple. He'll be right there. <laughs> That'd be a pretty big night for a guy yeah. who has not yet homered against the White Sox this year. Only one RBI in these six games. Two and one the count to Rodriguez. Last year, Sosa first had 33 homers after the All-Star break. So. Whether he homers tonight or not, whether he hits a grand slam and a three-run triple or whatever he does, he's on pace for another incredible year. That's a foul back and out of play. Two and two to count. See, I like Baldwin's fastball, the riding fastball, better than I like his sinker. His sinker doesn't seem like it, it doesn't come up and just kind of sink hard. It's like kind of rolling sinker. Off the outside. 
Yeah, see, that, that's what you need him to do. Give him a target. So I want you to hit this target with your best fastball. Just off the plate outside. But Rodriguez couldn't have touched it if it was a strike because he'd thrown two pitches inside. There goes Grace, and the ball is fouled back out of play by Rodriguez. Grace will have to turn around and go back to first. Mark Grace, who came up with the Cubs in 1988. Well, he and Sosa have played exclusively here in Chicago since the 80s. Sosa began in 89 with the White Sox, then traded over to the Cubs later on. And they are the only two Chicago athletes out of the five major professional sports teams in Chicago. They're the only two who have played exclusively in Chicago since the 80s. Grace is running. And again, Rodriguez fouls it back. Three and two. And, you know, they're... It'll be interesting to see how it plays out with Mark Grace, Joey's 35. The Cubs are an old ball club. And they're really struggling right now. They're not really in the pennant race at the moment. And if they're still not by the end of July, they might be inclined to start trying to trade some of the older guys to get younger for the future. They don't have anybody in the farm system really ready to help them. And Grace would be a guy who would be, you would think, real tradable. But he's also one of their favorite sons over there. He's a big fan favorite. He's running. And it's another walk. Consecutive walks. Two men on, one man out. Two nothing. The Cubs are leading. Well, the Women's World Cup of Soccer. And uh, what a, a great tour it was for the American women. And a special encore presentation of the Women's World Cup final, the USA versus China. Will be seen right here at ESPN this Tuesday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. So if you missed it yesterday, you have a chance to, to catch it on Tuesday. John, while we have some time here, you know, this is the first time maybe in the last 15 years I've been in Chicago and haven't had a chance to say hello to my good friend Ron Santo, who is, you know, with the Cubs. Santo is home now. He's recovering from... We're having some heart problems, but he's back home. And I just wanted to say hello to Ron because I miss him and I usually get a chance to come here and talk to him. And first time in a long time. I've been coming to Chicago for a lot of years and I've always had a chance to say hello to Ron. So we wish him well. One of the uh, all-time Cubs greats. And the guy that I know we've talked about this before, Joe, that we feel should be in the Hall of Fame. Yes. Glenn Allen Hill waves at one. Might have been that cut fastball from Baldwin. The count is on one. This is the way he started the bat off last time. He threw him a couple of pitches away, and then he left one in the middle of the plate. And he'll single to center field. Grace at second, Rodriguez at first. This is badly with that one. One ball, one strike. Brian Ward, you saw the left-hander, is warming up again in the White Sox bullpen. Baldwin has walked five hitters in the last two innings. He got one on and two men on here in the third. Johnson It's off the outside. Two and one. Go back to that cutter. Two and one. Well, this has been an all too familiar story for yeah. Baldwin and for White Sox fans. Back over our heads. Two and two. Two men on, Grace at second, Rodriguez over at first, both with walks. Baldwin, from game to game, they never really know which Baldwin they're going to get. So far tonight, they've had the bad one. 67 pitches, he's only retired seven hitters, and he's walked five. Yeah, it's missed on the inside there. His last start against Kansas City went six innings, gave up six runs. The start before that, eight innings, only two runs for a win against Kansas City. But then he was knocked out in the second by the Red Sox. Knocked out in the first by the Red Sox, the start before that. Gave up seven and five innings to Baltimore. And he's had a lot of bad ones. Hill slugs one. Deep in the left. Lee back to the wall. He can't get it. A three-run homer for Glenn Allen Hill. 
Five to nothing Cubs. Jersey originally went to the University of South Carolina Aiken which perchance is the same school that the Sox former outstanding closer Roberto Hernandez attended. Got him chasing the slider there all in two to count. And that's his best pitch. That's a good slider and he can get a lot of left handers to chase that pitch. White Sox went to Chicago last or went to the north side of Chicago last month and swept the Cubs at Wrigley Field. And there's that slider again for the strikeout. Two down. John, this is a Hills home run. It's a backup slider or one that doesn't break. Watch, you can just see it spinning right there. And Hill takes the spin off of it. He's not sure if it's out. It's high and deep. And he says, well, either they're going to catch it or I'm going to have a home run. So I'll take my time. And it clears the wall. Well, there's a little wind blowing in from left field that might have knocked that one down a little bit, but not enough for Baldwin's good. Glenn Allen Hill with his 15th home run of the year in only 144 at bats. I mean, he is just having a monster year for the Cubs. John, I don't think there's any doubt he's one of the strongest players in baseball. I mean, he is strong, strong. Jose Hernandez, the hitter, fouls one. One ball, one strike. That ball landed in the stands out there. That guy had it. Yeah, but I was watching him between innings. He was kind of like, I didn't want it. I was trying to push it back in and then while it was in the air, but since it came, I made the catch. If he'd been wearing a Cubs hat, this had been the bleachers at Wrigley Field, he definitely wouldn't have still be holding. He would have already yeah. gone back. <laughs> Two and one the count to Jose Hernandez. He walked his first time. And the Cubs, after losing the first four games to the White Sox, they had to pick up at third. The throw, he got him. Greg Norton. What a play. Five to nothing. The Cubs are leading after two and a half. John Miller and Joe Morgan, Sunday Night Baseball from uh, Comiskey Park in Chicago. And this was a very fine play by Norton. Watch, he charges, and he barehands it one step and throw, and he just barely gets Jose Hernandez at first base. Man, see a finer play than that. Craig Wilson, that is a foul. Well, fair ball, fair the, uh, the home plate umpire signaled He called fair, it and the fair. third base umpire signaled foul. Well, the home plate umpire's call. I don't know what's going on here. He called it fair. He was definitely pointing at fairground, and at the same time, Culbert, the third base umpire, was signaling foul ball. It's, it's the umpire, home plate umpire's call until the ball crosses the bag. All right, let's watch. Well, we can't see the home plate umpire, but I think that's what Tyler Houston saw was the home plate umpire you know, pointing fair. And that's what, uh, now you see, that's what Riggleman's coming out to ask him. How can you call it fair? It's your call, and yet be overruled. And that's exactly right. And that's what Riggleman says, that you called it fair. Jerry Cedar's ground, the plate up fire. I mean, clearly, 
he, I saw it, you saw it. He had the arm pointed into fair ground, and then the third base umpire, Culbreth, signaled foul ball. And it was not Culbreth's call. I mean, the ball never passed the bag at third base. Truthfully, Culbreth wouldn't even been making a call, so he put Cedarstrom in a bad position there. They did not work well together on that play. Oh, and one to Craig Wilson. Wilson is a, uh, a native of this area. He's from, uh, actually, he was born in Chicago and was a former baseball and basketball star, star at Layton High School in Franklin Park, Illinois. Franks one down the left field line. That is going to go to the wall on the hop. Glenn Allen Hill picks it up, and Craig Wilson has a double. Now let's go to the studio, and here's Mike Greenberg. John, thank you. Gum out brings us to Cleveland. Bottom one, no score. Reds and Indians. Manny Ramirez. That's a base hit and then some. Drives in two. 96 RBIs for Ramirez. Third most ever at the All-Star break, but the Reds put up nine unanswered. They take two out of three in the series. Back to Chicago. All right, thanks, Mike. And man, the Cincinnati Reds, what a story. What about the for this year? These guys are, how about those Reds? I mean, they're playing very, very well. And then they go to Cleveland and take two out of three from the, the mighty Cleveland Indians. The mighty Cleveland Indians were lucky to win yesterday's ball game. They, they took a two-run homer by Omar Vizquel in the ninth inning to win 11 to 10. Here's Ray Durham in a two high from Traxler. You have to count on Vizquel to hit a home run in the bottom of the ninth. No, it's not going to happen very often, but he got the job done yesterday. Wilson having hit the double. He's at second base. He's only had 83 at bats so far this year. And the Ray Durham have grounded out his first time. The leadoff man coming up. Change that body. Ray Durham last year scored 126 runs. The second most in the history of the White Sox. And the White Sox have a long history. Yeah. Getting back to the first year of the American League. A guy in 1925, John Musco, has the club record. But Durham scored 126 last year. He also hit 19 homers. That's a club record for a second baseman. He led all American League second baseman in runs scored and total bases. Was second in triples, RBIs, and stolen bases. And he became the first White Sox player since Louis Aparicio to steal 30 bases in each of three straight years. That's playing. So this guy is yeah. making a reputation for himself in the south side. Trying to drag the butt. And he's thrown out by Trexel. Well, I think it was a good idea, except he got to drag it to the right side. And uh, I think it's a good idea when you're trailing by five runs and you're the leadoff hitter, you can try to get on base give the big sluggers a chance. I guess he was trying to drop it down the third baseline. He pops it in the air so this runner second can't go. Now it's not even a sacrifice. He doesn't even get, you know, move. It's not even a good out, so to speak. He didn't advance any runners. Wilson could not risk it because it looked like Traxel might come off the mound and catch that ball. Traxel stumbled and played on the bounce. Here is Chris Singleton. Singleton had come up with the San Francisco Giants sort of stuck in their farm system. Some other young prospects had gone past him in the Giants' estimation. That's down the left field line. Singleton has a base hit. It's a fair ball. Both umpires agree. <laughs> Singleton will stop at second after the big turn. Scoring is Wilson. And the Sox are on the board. It is 5-1 to Cubs. Well, he's Two left-handed hitters are taking the ball the other way. Watch this pitch. It's supposed to be a fastball in, but watch it runs out over the plate. Singleton just hits it down the line right inside the line down and bounces into fair ter foul territory, and he gets a double. So Singleton, who was with the Yankees last year, the Giants had traded him to the Yankees for Charlie Hayes. And Singleton spent all of last year in the minors for the Yankees. And then the White Sox picked him up this year. The Yankees might wish they still had him by now. Frank Thomas, look out. Him. 
Singleton was uh, acquired for a player to be named later, last December, from the Yankees. He hit for the cycle this past Tuesday, hitting over 300 for the year, and we just saw why. And he drives in the White Sox first run of the game. Frank Thomas struck out his first time. Traxel again works him in, but misses. 2-0. Well, Traxel's trying to make sure that he doesn't get his arms extended as he did in the first inning and barely missed hitting the ball out of the ballpark. He doesn't want to give him that pitch again. Trying to stay in tight on Frank. You either th stay in very tight or you throw a sliders breaking off the plate outside. That's what you try to do. Singleton at second. One out. One in. And he goes out there just as clipped the corner for a strike. Two and one. It's that little slider he throws and he got it on the outside part of the plate. Into the White Sox power here. Thomas the hitter and Ordonez on deck. The Chicago club going to hit. The White Sox are hitting 284 as a team. Several 300 hitters in the lineup. That's too low. He's three and one. That's the splitter he tried to get him to chase. Each of the first five hitters in the White Sox lineup tonight are hitting over 300 for the year. Three and one the count to Thomas. A couple of doubles in this inning from Wilson and Singleton to get a run home. He tried to curve him, and man, he's lucky that that was up where it was. He, he hung it. The walk puts two men on. Meanwhile, remember the argument about the two umpires, each making different calls on the ground ball hit by Wilson. Let's listen in. The rule is, I mean, if, if, it's, an, if it's this side here you, and you go fair, that's a fair ball. What do you mean, no? No. He called it foul, the ball dead. Well, you called fair before no. he called foul? No. He, what do you mean, no? We got, we got two guys who got foul balls. You called fair. You got your right arm up. He's got both arms up. No. Foul ball, ball dead. One ball is called foul, it's ball dead. Well, I'll let, I'll let you try to explain that, John, because Riggleman is correct. There's Marty Demerit, the pitching coach for the Cubs, and uh, Jim Riggleman, obviously. We're very uh, pleased wearing a microphone for us tonight. So we were able to uh, to eavesdrop on that discussion with plate umpire Gary Cedarstrom. It sounded to me like Cedarstrom was not exactly agreeing with him that he had signal fair. Right. He said both guys have a foul ball, but that's obviously maybe had a foul ball after Cobra had a foul ball. <laughs> but he didn't have a foul ball originally. And I think what Demerit went out there to tell him, you have a five to one lead and you throw a guy three one breaking ball even if he takes it you got to come back and get him out with another one throw strikes make them earn their runs don't give them any help here's the Sox home run and RBI leader Maglio Ordonez headed for the all-star game one ball and no strikes tell you what that was good patience there by Ordonez because that was a good pitch it started in the strike zone and just sunk out good patient he's that tells you he's seeing the ball very well five to one the Cubs lead the White Sox trying to get back into it early against the struggling Steve Traxel that curve caught the outside one ball one strike Traxel retired the first five hitters he faced but five of the last seven White Sox have reached base now so since two down in the second He's lost that little magic he had at the beginning. Single to the second. Thomas at first here. Ordonez the cleanup hitter. Look at He buzzed him right under the chin. Two and one. It's the pitcher's version of the buzz cut. <laughs> Ordonez. 333 at bats this year. He's only struck out 32 times. So, here in Chicago, they prefer their right fielder, apparently. At least those folks do. Never heard of Sammy, apparently. Can't, can't place the name. Popped up foul. That will go out of play off to the right. Two and two to Ordonez. He's from uh, Venezuela. I've been reading all these names in the box scores and all yeah. the dispatches from the south side of Chicago all year. Tonight, 
We're just as anxious as everybody else to really get a, a good first-hand look at these guys. Ordonez from uh, Caracas, Venezuela. He led all American League rookie outfielders with assists last year. And this year, he's putting it all together. The defense and the offense. The fastball. Low and inside. So a big pitch coming up here. Carlos Lee. Another one of the, the young hot shots for the White Sox. It's on deck. Here's Carlos Lee. Two men on. Singleton at second. He doubled. Thomas, who walked at first. Thomas the third. Five to two Cubs. I tell you, that's good aggressive managing there by Jerry Manuel to have the runners going in that situation. I mean, it, moved, it actually allows Frank Thomas to get around the third. Singleton would have been able to score anyway, but he gets another base by putting Thomas in motion, and now he can score there on a fly ball. Ardonius takes his fastball. It's a sinking fastball, and he finds the hole on the left side just out of the reach of the shortstop. And here you see Norton. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Singleton comes in easily, but hustling around the third base is Frank Thomas. And so there's Jerry Manuel. He says, yeah, it worked that time. Jerry Manuel. Put him in motion. Here is Carlos Lee. This could be two at shortstop. And that is the second one. Morandini the first. Two double play. So the White Sox fans are drowned out by the Cubs fans. It's five to two Cubs. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball presented by Gum Out. Cubs five, White Sox two. As we head to the fourth inning now. And a real lively night here on the south side of Chicago. The White Sox have not been drawing well either last year or this year until this weekend. And 14,000 here for a game on Thursday. And then the, the crowds have descended. All roads have led to Comiskey over the weekend. As you see the, the look of the sellout crowd. And the new ballpark. There's a drag pot. Beautiful. And that's, there's nobody there to get it. Base hit for... Curtis Goodwin. Every time we see him, man, he's dropping down those bunts. He had a couple of bunt hits when we saw him against the Cardinals earlier this year. All-Star Monday, tomorrow on ESPN, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, the special edition of Baseball Tonight. Then at 8 o'clock, 5 Pacific, the Century 21 Home Run Derby. Larry Walker, Sammy Sosa, Nomar Garcia Para apparently will be able to compete in the Home Run Derby. That's at 8. And then 10 o'clock, the Celebrity Hitting Challenge. All on ESPN. You'll be right there with part of the festivities at Fenway Park. The, the final All-Star Game at Fenway where they have already undertaken plans for a, a new Fenway. It sounds to me like it's going to be built across the street from the, the current and a real Fenway. And will have a similar look with a monster wall. Mickey Morandini takes the ball. John, you're talking about home run derby and Curtis Goodwin is dropping down a bunt <laughs> from one extreme to the other. That's his sixth bunt hit of the season. And that was a thing of beauty. I mean, that's the way you do. I wish I'd known how to do that, man. It hit higher, had a higher batting average. More regrets. Than that. Always with these regrets. Well, you have to have the problem. You learn things too late. You, know. you guys say, if I only knew now what I knew then, I could could have hit better. Yeah. Poor Joey had such a poor <laughs> career. <No. laughs> yeah. I'm, I, not, I'm, I I'm feel, happy with it. But I feel bad for you. Yeah, I'm happy with it, but, you know. If only you'd known how to play then. Well, if I would have gotten on base one more time, I'd have helped my team one more time. Are you for the Sox or for the Cubs tonight? Hmm. There's no neutrality, they told me. Oh, that's what they said. Yeah. Well, I'll everybody have... is either for one or the other. I'll have to ask my... You are either with me or against me, they say in <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> okay. Well, 
I'm with my buddy Michael Alicia, and he's a Cubs fan, so I guess we're Cubs. Uh oh, oh I can't do that. <laughs> I just can't pull. I just have to be an announcer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's still rooting for the Reds. <laughs> Two and one the count to Moran Dean. And that is a foul down the left field line. Not a play. Two and two the count. The Red, a lot of people start to pull for the Reds again, though. In well, Cincinnati, where they basically had not been showing up right. for a while. Well, I've been pulling for the Reds for a mm, long time. But they are starting to play great baseball, not just good. And they're playing great baseball now everywhere. For a while, it was just on the road. Yeah. And a basic time with Houston for the top in the National League Central. Although they have a, a, a better winning percentage than do the Astros. And they have a, a mutual seven game lead over Pittsburgh, seven and a half over the Cardinals and Brewers. The Cubs are at the very bottom of the National League Central. They lead tonight, though, five to two against the White Sox. Brian Ward, the pitcher out of the bullpen. Curtis Goodwin, who's a very fast runner, is a threat to steal. Although, this is kind of astounding to me with all the speed he has. Joe, he has not actually stolen a base this year. Well, speed alone doesn't steal bases. You have to be able to read the pitchers. There he goes, and it's a foul. He had a decent jump. He had a decent jump in John. Not a great jump, but a decent one. Decent, not great. Yeah, yeah. He's Pretty got, good, not great. Yeah, he's got to make up for that one with his speed. You've seen better. I've seen better. Good one was with Colorado last year and had five steals. He had 22 steals for Cincinnati two years ago. Only got into 85 games. Three and two the count. He is not running. That's a foul ball. Curtis Goodwin, 26 years of age. He's from Oakland, just like Ricky Henderson. Is. Right. Ricky Henderson was a guy that he kind of idolized as a, as a kid. He went to San Leandro High School. Open activity for the White Sox. Sean Lowe started to warm up. Got a lot of Bay Area action going on here in Chicago tonight. Major leaders have come to the Bay Area. Yeah. Good one running again, and that's another foul. They were talking about the San Francisco Bay Area, not the Tampa Bay Area right. or the Chesapeake Bay Area. Or for that matter, the Hudson Bay Area. <laughs> Three and two the count. Hardly any major leaguers come from the Hudson Bay area. Mark Johnson has thrown out 29%, which is about major league average, so he's just a little above. Morandini hanging tough. And good one back to the back. The Cubs, as a team, don't do a whole lot of running. They've only stolen 36 bases the whole year. And their leading base dealer, Lance Johnson, is on the disabled list, and he has a third of their Stolen base total. And he got it picked off. Oh, man. I'm not sure about this, Joe, but I think he was going to go on that one. Well, he'd thrown over that two or three times. You should have been able to read him by that, you know, after throwing that many times. Plus, if it's, you know that it's a hit and run, you do not get picked off. You just make sure he throws. That's not that great a move right there. I mean, he never started toward the plate. So one out, and Mickey Morandini down on strikes. And this inning has turned around in a big hurry. A pickoff play, and then the next pitch, a strikeout. From one out and nobody out to two out and nobody out, just like that. Off to the west of Chicago, the setting sun. As seen from the gum out, aerial cam. We're glad to have him with us again here tonight. That's a beautiful uh, scene. And so we are here where the fans are oblivious to everything except the Cubs and the Sox. Two down, nobody on. Tyler Houston has popped out twice to the second baseman. Ward misses off the outside. 2 0 the count. It's 5 to 2. The Cubs had a two run second inning. The three run third. Hill and Goodwin drove in the runs in the second. And Hill with a three run homer in the third. He's driven in four of the runs in this game. Right on the outside corner. 2 and 1. The White Sox got two in the third. 
driven in by Singleton and Ordonez, two of the outstanding young players. one of the top young prospects. Houston had been drafted as a catcher. In the 1989. Right back to Ward. And that's the end. Ward has done a very fine job. Paul Canerco coming up, then Greg Norton, 5-2. to two. The Cubs lead the Sox. A rising star, we take you back to the 4th of July in John Halama. Mariners and the Rangers. Halama gets Lee Stevens to ground out to end the ball game. A 6-0 shutout. Halama throws the first complete game of the year for the M's. They could have used him today. We go back to Chicago. John Halama, man, he's, he's like eight straight games where he's pitched beautifully. He's had seven consecutive wins. Last night at Dodger Stadium, he got locked up in a, a beauty with Kevin Brown. Neither one of them got a decision. Dodgers won the game in the bottom of the ninth, two to one. John Halama, that's quite a pickup along with Freddie Garcia for the Randy Johnson trade for the Mariners. Two pitchers who have helped them a lot. They have combined with 16 wins for Seattle. As Paul Konerko takes a called strike on a curveball from Steve Traxel. Konerko, as much traveling as he's done, Joe, in the last couple of years, it's kind of hard to remember. He's only 23 years old. With the Dodgers and with Cincinnati last year, and then acquired from the Reds in a deal that may be one of those that helps both up. Mike Cameron, the center fielder, went to the Reds, and he's been having a very fine year. He's one of the best defensive center fielders in the National League right now. That's interesting. Canerco started off as a catcher, John, in the minor league, and they tried him at third base. Now he's pretty much a DH here. In Chicago. He started off in 1994 after being the 13th overall pick in the June of 94 free agent draft in Yakima. I actually saw him play at the All Star break that year, Joe. And I tabbed him right away as a can't miss prospect. That's high and tight for a ball, two and two. But last year, he started out the year hitting only 215 with the Dodgers. And the Dodgers did the close and they traded it to. Cincinnati for Jeff Shaw and hit only 219 for Cincinnati and also ended up going to the minor leagues for a month and a half. And that is a foul, but Canerco hitting 284 so far this year with the White Sox. 11 homers, 31 batted in. He's got a good chance now to maybe if this is for real and he can get himself straightened out to show the Dodgers they made a mistake. Well, it's a good environment for a young player. I mean, you got Ardonez, Lee, Norton, Durham. I mean, all these are young players, and you get a chance. I think you fit in better sometimes with a lot of young players when you're a young player. That is. Three and two to count. And they have the makings here of a very good ball club for a long period of time if all these guys can grow together and continue to improve together. Young players, Greg Norton on deck, and John Frank Thomas is still only 30 years old, so it's not like you know he's on the way out. There's that split finger pitch. Did he swing? No. First base umpire Ted Barrett rules in favor of Canerco, his second straight walk. Well, for a while it was very frustrating for Frank Thomas with all of the things the White Sox have been through here, but he's energized now. He says it's frustrating because in the early 90s I think we had a better ball club than anyone in baseball, but. Uh, for this man a little bit, but I think that within the next couple of years, we're going to be in the same situation. I'm very, very honored to be on this team this year and proud. Uh, we got a lot of young guys. It's fun to go to the clubhouse. These guys can really play. So it's the youth that has reinvigorated Frank Thomas, and it helps to have him in that round for these young guys to emulate. And also, to sort of be the focal point of that lineup. Yeah, it'll take a lot of the pressure off the young players. Here's Greg Norton. That's the ball outside. Norton singled his first time to end the, an 0 for 21 stretch. Out of the University of Oklahoma, he was a teammate with the Sooners of a guy who's another outstanding young player, the ace pitcher of the San Francisco Giants, Russ Ortiz. He's won 11 games before the All-Star break. And that is 
2 0. And now the catcher, Reed, goes out to talk to his new battery mate. Reed just picked up by the Cubs this week. Montrez also comes over. Comiskey Park in Chicago. And the Sox fans start to make the big noise. Mark Johnson on deck. Cubs are leading 5 to 2. Johnson, seven of the last 10 batters have reached against him. One of the ones he got out, though, was an inning ending double play in the third. Nice pitch there in the outside corner, 2 and 1. Well, confidence is a big part of. What in your game, whether you're a pitcher or a hitter, you have to have confidence in what you're doing. And Traxel seems to have lost confidence in his fastball. I mean, he's throwing the splitters three and two, even with a big lead. He was throwing three one curveballs to Frank Thomas, even though he was a hit five to one at the time. I think he just has to use his fastball a little bit more, and that's what they're talking to him about, trying to get him to use his fastball. Popped up. And in the shallow left. Hernandez, and that is at number one. Good fastball up, just a little bit out of the spike zone. He got Norton to go for it. Well, he's been throwing a lot of splitters and curveballs and change-ups. Here he goes with two fastballs in a row. He threw one on the outside corner, and this one is just above the letters. And Norton can't get to it, and he pops it up. Norton uh, looking a little over anxious here, swinging at the ball up out of the strike zone. One out. Here's Mark Johnson. He struck out looking his first time. Five to two. The Cubs are leading. They're in the fourth. And it's off the outside. One ball and no strikes. The Cubs were swept by the White Sox back in June over at Wrigley Field. And really that sort of began the free fall for the Cubs. Eight wins, 21 losses in their last 29 games. Beginning around that time. And it's back out of play. In fact, Joe, going back a little bit further than that, on June the 5th, their record was 30 wins and 21 losses. They were just one game back of the Astros in the Central Division. Fourth, the fourth best record in the whole league. Since then, look at that. Since June the 5th, 10 wins and 23 losses. And look what the team ERA has been that's, in those 33 games. That's amazing. The earn, those are earned runs. 7.25 earned runs a game. I mean, in 33 games. I mean, you know, I've seen like for a week yeah. where a team had an ERA that high. Johnson swung at a pitch that was up about eye level. So we know he saw it well. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, that 33 games and just have an earned run average for seven, almost seven and a half runs a game for that long, that's that's more than a slump. That's a pattern. Well, as Casey Stengel once said, Joe, 50% of this game is 90% pitching. <laughs> and the Cubs have, uh, have gone about proving it here the last month and a half or so. Canerco at first, one out. Tracks over the one and two count. Strike three call. The change up in there. Change up or maybe a slider. Got him looking again. Well, he was confused too, John. Johnson, let's take a look at this. Well, that's a splitter. It moves back over the inside part of the plate. Comes right back over the inside part of the plate, sinks it in a little bit. And you can see it's a good pitch. That ball moved back over the inside corner. Well, not the approach for Johnson there. Swung at a pitch up over his head and then with two strikes took one in there. Here's Wilson. That's a ball out of play. Joe, I'm intrigued by this guy, Craig Wilson. And, you know, they've been playing Mike Caruso mostly at shortstop. But Wilson last year had 47 at bats as a September call up. A little over 50 plate appearances altogether. And he hit 468. The highest batting average among Major League players with a minimum of 50 plate appearances in history. His Major League debut against the Yankees, he went three for four with two doubles and a homer. First game he ever played. 
takes a ball out of play. He singled off Andy Penn in his first career at bat. So this guy, pretty intriguing. He came out of Kansas State as a uh, senior. He had 416 with 62 RBIs, was a first team All American. Still holds the Kansas State records for hits, runs, RBIs, doubles, total bases. Well, hitting is not Caruso's problems. His problems have been the defensive problems, because he's a pretty good hitter, too. Caruso hit over 300 last year as a rookie. She got off the outside with that fastball. One ball, two strikes. Wilson doubled his first time and scored the first White Sox run. That was in the third inning. He's not been playing much. Caruso sitting tonight, and Caruso's average has fallen quite a bit, only 258, plus 16 errors. And a very bad day defensively here yesterday. Two down, runner at first. Two and two. Ray Durham, the leadoff man, would be next. Five runs, four hits for the Cubs. Two runs, four hits for the White Sox. Craig Wilson. Been around a while. He's 28 years old. The shortstop, Hernandez, over to Morandini, and that ends the inning. Five to two. The Cubs are leading after four innings. It'll be Sammy Sosa, Mark Grace, and Henry Rodriguez. The big guys are coming up for the Cubs. Stay with us. On ESPN, presented by General Motors. With three days off coming up because of the All-Star break, teams uh, can expand their bullpens here for these uh, last games of the season and uh, of the uh, first half of the season. And here's Jim Parquet. He's been the White Sox ace starting pitcher. Nine wins and six losses. And now they're able to use him out of the bullpen against... Sammy Sosa, Mark Grace, and Henry Rodriguez. Another guy, Joe, I've had a chance to see him in spring training, but uh, this guy's been pretty impressive. Yes, he has. They were even thinking about starting him tonight instead of Baldwin. Curveball, Sosa in the air to right field. Ordonez. Well, Sammy Sosa is now 0 for 3. Mark Grace coming up now. His contract ends at the end of this year, and there have been some talks that maybe he could be traded. We asked him about it. Any time that you're, that you're struggling uh, before the trading deadline, there's always uh, possibilities uh, that that can happen, and it's understandable. Me, personally, I'm a 10-5 and five guy, so uh, I can veto any trade. Uh, they'd have to come to me for the permission. So that's, uh, I've earned that uh, by being with the Cubs 12 years now, and... Uh, and that's a nice position to be in, but by the same token, um, yeah, this is a good group of guys, and I think we can get this turned around. Hopefully, we won't get to that. A very thoughtful response there by a very thoughtful Mark Grace, who has walked twice and scored twice in this game. He's started both of the Cubs' rallies with walks. Takes hit. So he's been on three straight times. Grace came into the game hitting 311, 11 homers, 53 batted in. He's walked 51 times. Grace normally would not have pulled this ball. He didn't pull left-handers that often. He went back through the middle and the other way. But that was a fastball, middle in, and he pulled it in the hole. Now, Peter Gammons today, Joe, had an item. By Atlanta being interested in Mark Grace. Bobby Cox is a big... It always has been a big fan of Mark. Henry Rodriguez, wild swing. And Rodriguez, who sat out the game Friday because of some back problems, only DHing yesterday and again tonight because of the back problem. And he uh, kind of stumbled out of there after that swing. Well, that was a good fastball from Parquet right up under the hands. off the left field line. Going to the count. Everybody's here in Chicago. If you're in Chicago, you're here tonight. Hey, man, there's Rhino. Rhino's here. Everybody, see what I'm saying? Yeah. 
And Joe Morgan's here. <laughs> Two of the great second basemen, Ryan Sandberg, Joe Morgan, in the same ballpark tonight. Actually, I saw advertisements for some golf tournament there. Are some of the great stars of Chicago are going to play in. One and two the count to Henry Rodriguez. Rodriguez has singled and walked. Cubs and White Sox, uh, a matchup that has been brought about because of the advent of interleague play. And these teams get together. The ballparks are always sold out. The electricity portion is always high. Well, Rodriguez swung at that high tight fastball again. Marquette gets it in there pretty quickly. That's what you call being over match right there. Rodriguez trying to hang in there on the breaking ball and he can't handle the two fastballs up and in. Here's Glenn Allen Hill. Four RBIs tonight including three on his last swing in the third inning. This one was hit about 18 miles high Joe. Got pushed down by the wind a little bit and just did make it. Ball one. Cave out of UCLA as an All-America 1997 as a junior went 13 and 2 for the Bruins tied for third among NCAA Division One leaders remember the United States team that won a bronze medal at the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta now he's kind of torn though Joe I mean he's a White Sox but his great uncle played in the Cubs organization years ago. And it's a foul. One and two the count. It's an unusual bat Glenn Allen Hill has. I don't think I've seen anything like that. It's like it's laminated. Look at the barrel. Different. Very colorful. Yeah. He hits it in the, just the right spot in that red part. That would be good if you're going out of hill. On the outside corner. Got him looking. One man left. Top of the order coming for the White Sox. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by the more than 2,700 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by Scott's Turf Builder with Insect Control for a thick green lawn and no insects. Sweet home, Chicago. And it's an all-Chicago matchup. The Cubs 5, the White Sox 2. Here at Sox Park in the south side. Top of the order. Ray Durham, Chris Singleton, and Frank Thomas take their shots against Steve Traxler. And Kirkland, this is badly with it. He's kept Durham off the base pads, which is a, a very important thing to do if you're going to beat the White Sox. Not so easy to do. Hard to figure how Durham's down in that American League All-Star team. I was thinking the same thing, John. He was on the All-Star team last year. Got a hit, drove in a run, scored a run. But not this year. Durham came into the game hitting 302. 14 stolen bases, got nine homers, seven triples. Found that one off to the left. One ball and two strikes. Just inside with a fastball. He tried to sneak one by him. Two balls, two strikes. I'm still at a loss to figure how Alex Rodriguez is not on the American League All Star team. And he just got a piece of that one. The other thing, Joe, is that really the reason that Durham is not on the All-Star team is that Joe Torrey picked Jose Offerman yeah. of the Red Sox. But the Red Sox had other players. It wasn't like they had to pick him because they needed to get a local guy in there. And Durham's numbers are 
a little better than Offerman. Offerman got off to a great start, though. Been slumping lately. And a strikeout. So he continues to shut down Durham. He is 0 for 3. Now Chris Singleton comes up. Tuesday night, as we mentioned a couple of times, he hit for the cycle. And uh, here it is against Kansas City. A single. The triple came second. Just did beat the throw. Then a double. And he needed the homer to hit for the cycle. And he got it. Put it on the board. <laughs> yes. And Curtis Goodwin grabs that one. And Singleton is uh, promptly retired here. He had a double and an RBI in the third. But is now one for three. Now, when I look at the All-Star team, I, you know, I, I think of All-Stars as the best players in the league. You know, I think of, when I think of American League at best players, I think of Ken Griffey Jr., Alex Rodriguez, I think Frank Thomas. Those are guys that probably come to mind, you know, very quickly. And I look and Alex Rodriguez is not on the team. Frank Thomas is not on the team. Thomas, first ball swinging. Jose Hernandez, plenty of time. And... Traxel has an eight-pitch inning against the top of the White Sox batting order. Five to two, Cubs have to five. Head league matchup, the Cubs in-game box score brought to you by Gumout. And you see there, the middle of the order, Grace, Rodriguez, Glenn Allen Hill have done most of the damage. Curtis Goodwin drove in a run, hitting nine on a sacrifice fly. Hill has driven in four of the Cubs' five runs as Jeff Reed takes ball one from Jim Parquet. Parquet, the nine-game winner for the White Sox. Young lefty. And he misses down and away. Parquet last year got into 21 games. and was 7-5. and five, But has really made great strides this year toward becoming an all-star himself. 3.970 RA. It's a foul back and out of play. Parquet only given up nine home runs in 103 innings now this year, which that's pretty good in the American League, especially. Not a big guy. Okay, five feet, 11 inches tall. Throws hard. And threw that one softly. A change up over the inside. Two and two to Reed. Johnny's got great stuff. Slider, curve, a cutter, and a very good fastball. And his change up may be his best pitch really good change up. I mean that's quite a change in speeds there too. It's 72 miles an hour. His fastball is up around uh, 90 or so. That one slashed foul into the seats and got there in a hurry. Two and two the count. And Parquet will walk back under the grass behind the mound. The All-Star game coming up Tuesday. ESPN, of course, will have coverage of All-Star Monday. Then the annual All-Star matchup Tuesday. Baseball will begin again on Thursday. And he's swing on that slider. No, it's his third base umpire field in coverage. we got the All-Chicago matchup here. How about the All-New York matchup at Shea Stadium this weekend? The Yanks finally won one, 6-3 to three over the Mets. Shea Stadium is all sold out for all three of those games. Nearly 54,000 each day. And they went right back to the slider in the dirt for the strikeout. One away. Now, let's go to Mike Greenberg. All right, John, and how did Ken Griffey Jr. finish up the first half of the season? Glad you asked. Facing Darren Dreyford Singer. Ken Griffey's 29th of the year, but the Mariners didn't have a whole lot more than that on the day. They lose in L.A. 14-3. The Dodgers sweep the three-game series as we go back to Chicago. Yeah, L.A. with its fourth consecutive win, showing signs of putting it together. You see the... Home run leaders, of course, we we're very sad to learn that Jose Canseco underwent back surgery today for a herniated disc. And Harold Baines has been selected to replace him on the All-Star team. One ball, one strike to count to Jose Hernandez, who's walked and grounded up the field. Well, I really feel badly for Canseco because he is having an awesome year. And a 
mean, he had a chance of hitting 60 plus home runs. I mean, he's on pace. He's 31 home runs. And he was having a great year. So he may miss the rest of the year. For the back surgery. Harold Bain certainly has had an all star type season in terms of his, his numbers. He almost hit Hernandez. On the other hand, Joe, as you were talking about earlier, there were other choices that could have been made, like an Alex Rodriguez or even a Mo Vaughn returning to Fenway. Uh, yeah. Or Frank Thomas. But, I mean, again, I mean, all the guys that are on the team deserve to be there. We're just looking at the people who are not there and I think deserve to be there as well. And part of the problem, too, is the, the rule that every team must have a member. But I can't disagree with that, John, and I'll tell you why. I think the you know say Tampa Bay or Montreal the teams that aren't that's a third Norton he's got pretty good arm not number two Hernandez is gone the Women's World Cup history was made at the Rose Bowl yesterday the US and China Mia and Julie and uh, the outstanding women's team and the uh, Women's World Cup and an encore presentation Tuesday at 8 Eastern on ESPN. If you missed it yesterday, do not miss it on Tuesday. Here's Curtis Goodwin, who's had a sacrifice fly and a drag bunt for a hit. And takes a strike over the outside. John, I was saying that, you know, every team that supports, every city that supports a major league team, in my opinion, should have someone to root for in the All-Star game. Now, because we continue to expand, we should expand the roster. To accommodate those types of situations but I still believe that the fans pick only eight starters that leaves 22 players right now to fill out the roster so we're complaining a lot of times about the, the fans not doing a good job maybe we're not doing a good job of filling out that other 22 although the fans voted in four Cleveland Indians right of those eight yeah no I agree with that uh, the other 22, you got to, to represent 13 teams. Yeah, those 22. But I know I agree that you know that. But this is kind of an aberration year. I mean, in the last last year, that wasn't the case, and small market teams get hurt by that. Yeah. Well, Juan Gonzalez got hurt by that. Right. The Texas Rangers only had eight home games in the entire month of June. Five to two, the Cubs lead. Ordonez coming up. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball presented by Gum Out. Five to two, the Cubs lead the White Sox. As we start the last of the sixth inning, Steve Traxel has been real strong up till now. Just a brief trouble in the third inning. They got out of nicely. Naglio Ordonez. Tyler Houston throws him out, and there is one away. Ordonez heading to the All Star game and uh, hitting cleanup tonight, but he did not start the year in that slot. Jerry Manuel, his manager, told us why. We thought that if we started him out in the fourth hole that we might be impeding his progress. We might be putting too much on him too early. But um, he has adjusted extremely well to the fourth spot and being able to hit behind Frank and has now gotten a respect around the league that if you do walk him, I'm capable of driving the run in. And uh, he takes great pride in that. Jerry Manuel. Enjoy the listening to it, the way he speaks, Joe. He's, well, you know, he gets to the point pretty quickly. Let you know what what he's what, what's on his mind and the reason they did certain things. I mean, he, he's, he's very impressive to talk with him because he, uh, I mean, he's obviously in charge right. and he, he speaks with confidence and he speaks with conviction. And Ordonez, who started the year hitting fifth in the order, moved into that fourth spot. And, as uh, Jerry Manuel said, obviously he has handled it real well. One thing for sure, if you hit behind Frank Thomas, there's going to be a lot of men on base. Yeah. You get Frank's on base all the time. And a lot of RBIs for guys who've hit behind Frank Thomas over the years. Carlos Lee, the hitter, what a tough night for him. The best pitch he's gotten to hit all night was that one that he didn't swing at. One, uh, three balls and a strike. He has hit one right back to Traxel, and he is also grounded into an inning ending double play. Two with the knees. Panerko on deck. Only being real patient here. They need base runners. Down by three. Now he'll have to swing at anything close. Three and two to count. Two 
toward the middle. Hernandez behind the back. He kind of submarined that one over to first base. Two down. The White Sox gum out in-game box score. Ray Duran been kept off the bases. Frank Thomas 0 for 2. Ordonez drove in a run. And uh, Craig Wilson, the ninth place hitter, scored a run after doubling. Singleton doubled him home. And Steve Traxel has not allowed a hit to any of the White Sox since the third inning. Two down, nobody on. In fact, he has now retired eight straight White Sox since Paul Konerko led off the fourth inning with a walk. This is what the Cubs have been hoping to see for a good long while. Traxel has lost eight straight games. He has not won since May the 15th. And uh, when you're counting on your 15-game winner to put some W's up there for you, that has been a, a huge difference in this Cubs club this year. The last time he won a game was May the 15th against Atlanta with a complete game. And they were hoping that at long last Traxel had locked himself in, but it's been a long string of misery for him since then. That's called strike with a curveball on the outside to Konerko. Konerko has walked twice. He had a game with Milwaukee two starts ago. Three and two thirds innings, ten runs allowed. Three innings against Colorado, nine runs allowed. Whoa. And the splitter for the strikeout. That's nine in a row retired by Traxel. And we head into the late innings. Morandini, Houston, and Sammy Sosa coming up. Five to two Cubs. It's not about the ring. It's about bragging rights. The 1999 Century 21 Home Run Derby. Tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. Jim Parquet, who has struck out four of the last five Cubs that he has faced into his third inning of work. And he throws ball one to Mickey Morandini, the leadoff man for the Chicago Cubs. And a fastball over the outside. One and one. Morandini is grounded out, walked, and struck out. Parquet. He's made 17 starts this year, working out of the bullpen for the first time before the All-Star break. Fastball on the outside. One ball and two strikes. Tyler Houston on deck, and then Sammy Sosa due up third in the inning. Sammy began his career on the south side of Chicago with the White Sox. That one is foul off the left field line. One ball and two strikes. You know, I saw Sid Thrift this week, Joe. Now with Baltimore, used to be uh, with the Yankees. And Sammy Sosa was still in Texas at the time. Change up inside, two and two. And Sid Thrift had been off watching the Yankee minor leaguers for a while and had seen a young guy named Bernie Williams. Was very impressed. And he got back from the minor leagues. That one is in the air. Out in the left center. It's an interesting story because it could have changed history. But meanwhile, he was traded eventually from the White Sox to, uh, or from Texas to the White Sox. This was his first Major League homer. Toward left field and very high. Does it make the screen? It does. Home run for Sosa. It's three to two now. Sammy Sosa with his first homer. Yeah, that was June 21st, 1989 at Fenway Park. And, of course, Sosa is heading back to Fenway. Really, for the first time. As an all-star, as Slammin' Sam. Traded to the White Sox in a, a deal that sent Harold Baines to Texas. Houston drives one deep into left center field. Way back there, this one is gone. And all around Comiskey Park, the very large contingent of Cubs fans go nuts. Well, you only call it a hanger because he hit it. It was a breaking ball out away from him, and Houston went the other way with it and drilled it in the left center field. Ninth home run of the year for Tyler Houston. 
Sammy Sosa comes up. The Sammy chant out here in the background. Sosa is hitless in this game. Grounded out twice and flight out to right. He has not homered against the White Sox this year in the six games played. Nice pitch by Parquet, and it is 0 and 1. Mark Gray side deck, 6 to 2, the Cubs lead. It's the first time Tyler Houston has ever hit a home run against a left handed pitcher in his major league career. Well, he looked like he knew what he was doing, then that at bat. Breaking ball away, and he goes the other way. 1 and 1 to Sosa. On the inside corner, one and two, and Sosa turns to question that call from Gary Cedarstrom. Fastball on the inside corner, watch the catcher's target. Doesn't move it very much at all. He thought it was a strike, too. A ball and two strikes. The young Jim Parquet against the veteran Sosa. And tight. Two and two. Pitch there should have been to get to his changeup. His best pitch is, his, is a changeup, and you want to show him a good high fastball to follow it. You know, something to work off of. Set the target inside again. Another fastball. He got me too. You would have been looking changeup. Well, you don't look for changeup with two strikes. You look fastball, but you think, well, I'll adjust if it's something else. You have to look for a fastball at all times. But, you know, there's a little difference between guessing and looking. You know, there's a thin line there. Oh, yeah, I know that. 3 2 pitch, the, the uh, curveball. Deep to third. Norton made a great pickup and a great throw to retire Sosa. Sosa's hit the ball hard twice, but he's 0 for tonight. Let's take a look at this home run by Houston. The watch is a breaking ball away. Watch where the pitch is. Breaking ball away. He goes that way with it. That's what a left-hander is taught to do. Not necessarily drive it out of the ballpark, but he drives this one and he has enough power to get it out of here in the left center field. Now Mark Grace. He's walked twice and singled. Scored twice. Sammy's hitting in a little bad luck. He's hit two balls sharply down the third base, and Norton has picked him twice. Norton just made a great play in that last one. Third ball is low. And that was one of those in between hoppers, and he was uh, rocking back for it. You know, and, and uh, you have to forgive Sam if he's feeling a little uh, put upon because Norton made 18 errors this yeah. year. But he's been flawlessly tonight. Well, you see, and then he's got a very strong and accurate arm. Look at that. I mean, he just snaps it across there. He doesn't even have to wind up to throw it from that deep behind the bag. And ball four to Mark Grace. So he reaches for the fourth time. First walk allowed by Parquet. This is a better view of the play. And like John says, that in between hobby had to back up. Now he gets it. Now this is the tough part because he's so deep. He has normally you have to take a step towards first base to get enough on it. He just reaches and snaps it across the diamond. And I think there goes Norty Contreras out to talk to him, and he's probably thinking that he's uh, maybe tiring a little bit because he just looked like he didn't throw those pitches to Mark Grace. Bill Seamus, a right-hander, gets up in the White Sox bullpen as Contreras goes out to the mound. John, talking about, about changing history. Yes, Sammy Sosa was a minor leaguer with the Texas Rangers. Sid Thrift was with the Yankees. He got back from a trip seeing his, uh, his, one of his minor league clubs and seen Bernie Williams. Very impressed with Bernie. He got back and George Steinbrenner told us, I've made a trade with the White Sox. I've gotten Harold Baines. He said, well, who'd you give up? A minor leaguer named Bernie Williams. <laughs> he says, well, that's ridiculous. If you make that trade, you'll look like a fool. Mm -hmm. And George took, the, took umbrage at that, he said. Henry Rodriguez swings and misses. He says, what do you mean? Well, Bernie Williams is everything you're looking for in a young player. Baines is a great hitter, but he's an older guy. You can't make that trade. You'll look like a fool. And 
So, based on his advice, George Steinbrenner called off the, the proposed trade. Although he told Sid Trips, you better be right. <laughs> and I think Sid was right, as we've seen from about Bernie Williams. Yeah. Can you imagine if that trade had been made? Baines to the Yankees, Bernie Williams to the White Sox. Sammy Sosa would not have left Texas. And maybe Sammy Sosa and Juan Gonzalez would have played together in the same outfield in Arlington all of these years. Maybe they could have gone to the All-Star team together. Man. And that could have been some history right there in Texas. Rodriguez goes down on strikes. And the inning is over. Five strikeouts and three innings for Parquet. Six to two, Cubs. Be a part of the major leagues, and it may even help your game. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by Gum Out. Drive your fuel system clean with a complete line of Gum Out Performance Fuel Additives. Downtown Chicago, my kind of town. You'll be hit that town tonight. Won't you? <laughs> And as Joe has often pointed out, they say New York is the city that never sleeps. Are you kidding? <laughs> hey, I used to go out in this town. Now Mike and I go have a little dinner. And, uh, yeah, you you're, know. Well, because you're much older now. Thank you. A little din din. Here's uh, Greg Norton taking a curveball from Traxel for a strike. Going to it. And Traxel has just gotten a, a groove going here for the first time in maybe two months. He's retired nine in a row. He has not given up a hit since the third inning. A 12 game loser, but a 15 game winner last year, and the Cubs need him to turn it around. And Norton has gone on strikes. He's now one for three in the game. Five strikeouts for Traxel. Six strikeouts make it. Next Sunday night, more interleague action on Sunday Night Baseball. From Camden Yards, Cal Ripken and the Orioles take on uh, Mike Piazza and the New York Mets. The Mets right in the race there in the Na National League East. The Orioles, who have four All-Stars, but are the team that nobody can figure. They are in dead last in the American League East. And there is ball one to Mark Johnson, the catcher. Sunday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. We hope that you will join us. It's always uh, fun to check in on Cal Ripken, who's having a, a heck of a year. Yes, he is. Heading for his 17th All-Star game. 2-0 now to uh, Johnson. I think I saw a note the other day. Willie Mays and Stan Musial played in like 24 All-Star games. That's a lot of games. Because a couple of times, you know, years, a few years, they had two in one season. That's a called strike. 1959, they had two, and Willie Mays drove in the winning run. You know, in those days, it was not unusual for a, a Willie Mays and a Hank Aaron and the, and the biggest of the stars to play the whole All-Star game. You're right. Somewhere along the line, it changed the managers now. That's foul. The managers now seem to think that the only point is to try to get everybody in. Everybody in. Right. But it used to be that, I mean, you know, the All-Star game started right here in Chicago. Right. And it was a dream game for the fans. We talked about this last week, Joe. It was a dream game meant for the fans, a dream chance to see all of the greatest stars on one field. The game was for the fans. And if players got to the All-Star game and didn't get in the game, well, that was too bad for them, but that was not what the game was for. The game was for the fans. And right. if you've got Ken Griffey Jr. and Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, that is why the fans are tuning in. Let's see him play. More than one or two at bats. Yeah. Say. Well, and you played full games, didn't you? Lots of times. Several times. I remember, and also think about the fact that Ted Williams hit home runs in the 12th inning or 11th inning to win all-star games. Stan Musial did the same. They had to have been playing to be able to do that. So yeah. it has changed a lot. I mean, the game was far more competitive. Now it's maybe a little bit more of an exhibition. 
And I've always said that the baseball all-star game is the best all-star game of all because it's truly the same game you see every day with the best players playing it. You know, a pro football all-star game, they can't play the same way. Uh, an NBA game, they can't play the same way. Hockey, you won't have the same physical, you know, type of game. So I think that baseball is the only game where you it's the same game you see every day with the greatest players playing it. At least that's the way it used to be. Yeah. Johnson down on strikes. That's three consecutive strikeouts for Traxel and 11 consecutive retired. Two down, nobody on, and Craig Wilson is coming up. He just turned on a switch, John, because, I mean, he's been just unbelievable, unbelievably successful, you know, since he started. He got a double play in the third inning, and since that time, I mean, he's been in complete com control of this ball game. Only one base runner for the White Sox since the third inning. And that was a leadoff walk to Pinerco in the fourth inning. Two down, nobody on. Wilson has doubled and scored a run, and he is hit into a force play. Seven strikeouts for Trexel. Ties his high for the season. Ranging far to his left, Morandini from the outfield grass throws him out. Twelve in a row, retired by Traxel, who looks like anything but a 12-game loser tonight. Six to two, Cubs. <laughs> Six to two, the Cubs lead the White Sox as we go to the eighth inning now. Comiskey Park, Chicago. This is John Miller along with Joe Morgan, your Sunday night telecasters. Glenn out on the hill facing the new pitcher, Keith Folk. They were teammates two years ago with the San Francisco Giants. Folk came up with the Giants. And he was part of that uh, huge stretch run trade that the Giants and the White Sox made at the end of July. The changeup. And uh, Folk, who had pitched for the Giants in the big leagues that year, but without much success, ended up going in that trade. He has gone to the bullpen here in Chicago with great success. Right now, he may be their most effective relief. Tough hop. Norton fields it cleanly. And Hill, who runs real well. Just out at first base. And, uh, again, Norton is putting out a show over there defensively tonight. Six to two, the White Sox trail the Cubs. Is the GMC truck game summary? Six runs, six hits for the Cubs. Two runs, four hits for the White Sox. Steve Traxel has been just what the White Sox have been looking for all season long, at least through seven. And the Glen Allen Hill with two hits and four RBIs. James Baldwin, another early exit. For the White Sox, as Jeff Reed takes a called strike. Reed is 0 for 3. 1967, Joe, on this topic of All Star games, how things have changed in terms of how the managers utilize their players for the All Star game. The idea now seems to just try to get everybody in the game as if the only point of the game is for the sake of the players who made the team. Right. And certainly that's, that's well and good. But I think that was not actually the point of the game. 1967, a 15 in the game in Anaheim. Brooks Robinson played all 15 innings for the American League. And as you were mentioned, that's not unusual. No, no. A lot of times in the past they would play until the issue was decided, and it wasn't decided until the 15th inning that year. So, I mean, Willie Mays and Hank Aaron, all the great players, would play until. You know, say the sixth or seventh inning, maybe one team's way ahead, and then they would let it go. Then they'd start making substitutions. One and two to read. In fact, John, a lot of people are, you know, talking about Juan Gonzalez not going. And I must say this I don't agree with what he did, but I understand. And I would rather have a guy that cares about, you know, making the team than one who says, well, I don't really care. Uh, what about I, the notion, though, that they didn't even. Invited. Exactly. That's my, that was my next point. Strike three called to read. Uh, number two. Now we'll be right back and pick up that thought. Let's go to Mike Greenberg. All right, guys. A's and Diamondbacks today in Arizona. Bottom six tied at three. Bases loaded for Jay Bell before the game. Jylene Hoyle, a Diamondback fan, predicted that Bell would hit a grand slam in the sixth inning, and you're not going to believe this. That's a grand slam in the sixth inning. Diamondbacks win at 7-4, and Jylene Hoyle wins $1 million. I can dig that. <laughs> well, where do you enter? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> John, let me, let me finish my point about in the Gonzalez. A lot of people may not remember this, but 1972, 
the great Roberto Clemente said he wasn't going because he wasn't selected to start. But they chose him anyway. And Bowie Kuhn, who happened to be the commissioner at the time, insisted that Roberto go. Roberto went to the game, and he actually ended up pinch hitting in the ninth inning to drive in the, win the tying run. I was the tying run. That's the reason I remember this. I was on base, and he had a fly ball to drive the end. But the point is, Gonzalez, in my opinion, should have been chosen. And then if he decided not to go, then it's on him. But we have a system. The system says you're supposed to pick the best 22 guys or the best people for the All-Star game. And I think he should have been chosen. You know, and, I, and I, so I, I, I don't think either party was right in this situation. Norton can't hold that one. He's got his feet tangled up on that one. And Jose Hernandez reaches. And I'll tell you another thing since I'm on this subject. You know, Barry Bonds was recently chosen the player of the decade. I still think he should have a, on his resume this year that he was chosen to the 1999 All-Star Game. Now, I know he's injured, but if he can't go, well, that's another story. Rob Nin was chosen. He can't go. And Barry will not have that on his resume, and here he is chosen the player of the decade. So uh, I just think that he should have been chosen, and then if he can't play, he can't play. And I also don't think that great players should be hurt by the injuries. I'm talking about like Barry was injured. He still is having a pretty good year since he's been back. Even Roger Clemens. Roger was injured, you know, and he's won five Cy Young awards. I mean, you know, I mean, what is an all-star if that's not an all-star? And Mo Vaughn was injured, you know, at the beginning of the season. You have a lot of guys who are injured who are really the best players in the game today. And I, and I think that's what an all-star game is all about. Curtis good with the hitter. One for two. Maybe they should just, next year I'll just let the fans choose eight and then let me and you pick the rest of them. All right. <laughs> now you're talking. <laughs> Man, just make sure they don't give out our phone numbers. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to start taking some serious heat at that point. Be careful what you wish for. But that's what makes, truthfully, I mean, th this is obviously only my opinion, but that's what makes the game great because... I mean, you know, everybody else has their own opinions about what an all-star game is and how the people should be chosen. And that's what makes this job great, because we can say whatever oh, yeah. we want. Exactly. And then nobody blames us. Right. And the strikeouts of Keith Bolt with a couple of strikeouts here in the eighth inning. Top of the order, the White Sox running out of outs. Durham singled it at Frank Thomas. They trail 6-2. On in. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball presented by Gum Out. Cubs six, White Sox two, last of the eighth, and the White Sox are running out of outs here to try and mount a comeback against Steve Trexler, who has retired 12 Sox in a row. Ray Durham, the leadoff man, has been kept off the base pass tonight. Part of what has been a very strong performance by Trexler. Only one ball has been hit out of the infield by the White Sox since the third inning. He has retired 12 in a row. Big moment of the game for him in the third. He had a 5-2 to two lead. He was in trouble. Runners at first and third. One out. Carlos Lee at the plate. And he got Lee to hit a double play just as Terry Mulholland had started to warm up in the bullpen. He has not been in trouble since. One of those key moments. I mean, if he'd given up a hit to Lee or if they had failed to turn the double play for some reason, everything else might have been different. Terry Adams up in the Cubs bullpen. John, basically what he's done, he's, started, he's used his fastball a lot more since the third inning than he was using before the third inning. Last ten starts, no wins. And that earned run average, I mean, did you see that ERA? That, I mean, it probably looked like a misprint. 9.18 over a ten-start period. But it's not like he's just had a whole lot of tough luck in that time. It's just a whole lot of bad pitching. The curveball. And that is his eighth strikeout, the most he's had in a game this year. Well, he has handled Durham very well, as you mentioned. And that's a big breaking curveball right there. The bottom falls out. Look how, look how much of a drop this takes. Durham a little surprised that he missed that ball, but that, that was a very good breaking ball. 
Here's Chris Singleton. He drives one deep into right down the line. This one is headed on its way. Go on. Now the White Sox fans stand and cheer. The fireworks go off and the old exploding scoreboard goes into motion. seven for Singleton and now the big hurt comes up it is six to three Cubs that was a pretty good shot too it's 347 feet to the foul poles in this ballpark yeah this is not a home run hitters ballpark this is a big ballpark Frank Thomas 0 for two with a walk first home run of the night for the White Sox Two and zero, and now the catcher Reed goes on to talk to Traxel. Here's a fastball in, and that was not a bad pitch, location-wise. It was on the inside part of the plate, maybe a little off the plate inside, and Singleton was able to keep it fair down the right field line. Pretty quick bat on that inside pitch. Yeah. Two and zero. Three and zero. Maglio Ordonez, the home run and RBI leader for the Sox, is on deck. Adams continues to heat up in the bullpen. There's Maglio. I think there's just something about Frank Thomas, John. It doesn't matter what the score is. You see him up there, and you don't want to pitch to it. Yeah. I think that must be the scouting report on Big Frank. Is yeah. yeah. Throw him sliders in the dirt. Yeah. Base hit. First hit of the game for Frank Thomas. So Traxel, who had not allowed a hit since the third inning, has given up two in a row. And here comes Riggleman. Adams ready in the bullpen. And the call is already gone. So it's the strongest outing in nearly two months for Steve Traxel. And he will not join six others as one of the 13 game losers by the All Star break. And should win it. And the Cubs fans salute him as he heads off. Adams coming in. Six to three Cubs, and we'll be right back. Enough is in here. Great night for Steve Traxel. He leaves with a six to three lead, and as is their custom in Chicago, they sang him off the field. been doing that for over 20 years here in the south side when a visiting pitcher gets knocked out of the box they sing goodbye to him Nancy Faust on the organ here and she's a show all by herself and it's fun to see excitement and fun being had again here in the south side of Chicago this ballpark had been a cold empty place here for the last handful of years Frank Thomas at first as Terry Adams comes on to face all-star Maglio Ordonez to short. Hernandez has it. They get one. Morandini to first. Two double play. And the Cubs fans are in high dungeon themselves. More Sosa coming up. 37, Jerry Rice. Friday at 10.30 on ESPN. Presented by General Motors. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball from Chicago. 6 to 3, the Cubs. We go to the ninth. And there's the look from high overhead at Comiskey Park on the south side of Chicago from the gum out. Aerial Cam. Glad to have the moose again tonight. Next Sunday will be at Camden Yards in Baltimore, which opened the next year. Comiskey opened in 91, Camden Yards 92. We'll see Cal Ripken, the Baltimore Orioles, going up against Mike Piazza and the New York Mets. Terry Adams came in for the bullpen, Joe, and uh, he got the job done quickly against Ordonez. And uh, look who was one of the first to come in. And... Yeah, Traxel says, nice job, young fella. Kind of uh, bang-knuckle.
close together there. Yeah. Congratulatory high five knuckles. Maglio <laughs> Ordonez, who, who may not have to face hitting it into a double play in his own ballpark and the crowd going nuts <laughs> again this year. All the Cubs fans will head back north after this game. Top of the order against the uh, White Sox here in the ninth inning. Mickey Moore indeed. Keith Folt, the fourth White Sox pitcher of the game. There's ball one. Morandini is 0 for 3 with a walk. Tyler Houston will follow, and then Sammy Sosa is due up third in the inning. The mass can. Too high. 2 0 the count. Mark Johnson has been there kind enough to uh, wear a mass cam for us tonight. You hear the crowd, and uh, the umpire is stopping the game here for a moment. There's uh, some sort of a a fight going on in the stands. Perhaps overzealous Cub and White Sox fans who have uh, let the fists fly out there. The ballpark security is taking care of things while they do. Let us remind you again about All-Star Monday coming up tomorrow night on ESPN. The festivities will begin at 7.30 Eastern with a special edi edition of Baseball Tonight. Then at 8 o'clock, live coverage at the Fenway Park edition of the Century 21 Home Run Derby. Sammy Sosa, Larry Walker, Nomar Garcia Parra among the great stars who will participate at 10 o'clock, the Celebrity Hitting Challenge. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Resume play now. Two and zero. The count to Morandini. And he pops it up. And the out is reported as Wilson makes the grab. Four for four for Morandini. That brings up Tyler Houston, who homered his last time. Interesting day, Joe. The the American League has really been getting routed by the National League today in the interleague games. If the Cubs win this game, every single team in the American League Central will have been beaten today. By their counterparts in the National League Central. Houston with a foul ball right back toward us. Well, Peter Pascarelli was going to try to catch it. I was moving. Every team in the American League West was beaten today. Two full divisions of American League teams have been beaten if this score holds up. The Yankees, Blue Jays, and Orioles are the only American League teams who have won ball games today. If this score holds up, the American League would have won 3 and 11 against National League competition. In the American League East, the Yankees, by virtue of their win over the Mets today, with a four game edge on the Red Sox, who got victimized by Greg Maddox, who turned in a vintage performance. Blue Jays who won today over Montreal one to nothing. David Wells, David, two hit shutout at Montreal. Tony Fernandez is headed for the All-Star game, drove in the only run of the game. Strike three to Houston, and now Sammy Sosa with one last shot at it here at Comiskey. Fastball tailing on the outside corner. Look at that, right over the outside corner. Beautiful pitch. So now Sammy Sosa is introduced. He showed you his first major league home run 10 years ago with the White Sox against Roger Clemens. But you know, less than a month after that home run, he was optioned to Oklahoma City. The Triple A ball. And nine days after that, he was traded. There's a swing and a high fly ball. Shallow right center. And Sosa's gone. The Cubs. Have outscored the Sox 16 to 5 the last two days, even though Sammy has gone 0 for 10. We'll be back. Again, the view of Comiskey Park for the Gum Out Aerial Cam. 43,115, the paid crowd. And the three game series drew more than 131,000, which is an all time Comiskey Park record for a three game series. 
are Cubs fans with their rally towels. A lot of Cubs fans here as well as White Sox fans. Cubs uh, threatening now to take this series. They lead six to three. Coming up, Sports Center with Kenny Main and Dan Patrick. Jose Canseco underwent surgery today. There was a uh, a clash in the Winston Cup and a Sunday conversation with All-Star starting pitcher Pedro Martinez. Sports Center right after the game. Carlos Lee over three. Facing Terry Adams. Here. He is 0 for 3. Side corner for a strike. Lee with four homers, although he considered a, a power hitting prospect. Four homers and 212 at bats so far this year. One hopper, Tyler Houston. And there is one away in the White Sox ninth inning. The American League Central, if the White Sox lose this game, the entire American League Central would have been vanquished today. It's all Cleveland. White Sox are very distant second place. The other three ball clubs are also like the White Sox building with young players. The Royals have a couple of good ones. Uh, yeah, Beltran yeah. and Feblis. Yeah, the rain dies. Starting to come around for them as well. He's having a big year. Yeah. Former Atlanta Braves. Canuto, the fastball for a strike. He's walked twice and struck out. Greg Norton on deck. Just missing in the inside. One ball, one strike. The American League West got uh, swept away today by their counterparts in the National League. Rangers in pretty good shape over there, although their starting pitching has been real, real shaky. It's not gotten better. Oakland is hanging in there. It's a foul by Canerco. One ball, two strikes. I just keep thinking that the Mariners are going to right that ship and make a run, but as soon as you think that, something happens like today, and they get blown out again, so... Well, they'll open up in their new ballpark. It'll be interesting to see how things change, if at all, for them. I would think, from what we've heard about the new Safeco Field, that their pitchers will welcome the move because the Kingdom is a pitcher's nightmare. Slider in the dirt. Two and two over in the National League East at the All-Star break. The Braves by five over the Mets, and the Phillies are hanging in there. The Phillies. There's two uh, ace pitchers, the 13-game winner Shelly, 11-game winner Bird, right up there. I suppose the Marlins both rebuilding. And the strikeout on the slider. So Canerco is gone. Two down in the ninth inning. Well, that's a good slider down and away. And Canerco chases it. And that's what you do if you get two strikes. You can get ahead of the chase pitches out of the strike zone. And the fans are excited here. Yeah. Cubs fans anyway. Yeah. They sort of like identify themselves with their, their rally towels. And standing for the last out. Or what they anticipate to be the last out. Greg Norton, the fastball to strike. Norton is one for three. And Terry Adams might feel like he's over at Wrigley. Trying to get that final out, the way the fans are into it. Curveball, strike two. One strike away for the American League. Having a three win, 11 loss day in the Interleague Wars. Strike three call to the outside corner. The game is over. And the Cubs have won consecutive games. A two-game winning streak for the first time in more than a month. June 7th and 8th was the last time. And Steve Traxel gets his first win in nearly two months as the Cubs have something to, to build on now heading into the second half of the season. James Baldwin, another loss for him. And Sammy Sosa goes into the All-Star break with 32 homers, just one less than he had last year on his way to 66. Final score is 6-3. to three. The Cubs over the White Sox. Next time we'll see Sammy is in the Home Run Derby tomorrow at 8 Eastern on ESPN. John Miller for Joe Morgan. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Enjoy the All-Star break. All-Star Monday tomorrow. The All-Star game on Tuesday. Now
Stay tuned for Sports Center coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. From Chicago, good night.